In this problem, I need to find a polynomial f of x. We know it is degree 3. We're given three zeros of the polynomial, and we're given a point on the polynomial. We know when x is negative 6, the function value is 28. Well, to complete this problem, we're going to use the factor theorem. And here's the factor theorem that says a polynomial has x minus c as a factor if and only if c is a zero of the polynomial. Let me explain a little bit about what this if and only if means. It means if x minus c is a factor of the polynomial, then c has to be a zero of the polynomial. But it also says if c is a zero of the polynomial, then x minus c is a factor. And we're going to be using the factor theorem in this direction. Since we're given zeros, we then want to find factors that will help us find our polynomial. In completing these problems, I like to draw out a little table that helps me keep my thoughts organized. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have my zeros. I'm then going to write the associated factor that goes with that zeros, and I need to talk about the multiplicity of that zero. So we're given these three zeros here. The first one, x equals negative 5. What factor goes with it? Well, you can see from the factor theorem, if positive c is a zero, then x minus c has to be a factor. This sign has to be the opposite of this one. So the factor that goes with x equals negative 5 is x plus 5. My next zero is x equals negative 4. Its factor will be x plus 4. And the last one we're given is x equals 1 and its factor is going to be x minus 1. Now, in this problem, we're not told anything about the multiplicities of the zeros, but we're given the degree of the polynomial, and it's degree 3. Well, if these three zeros here, these three numbers are zeros, we know the minimum multiplicity they have to have is 1. And when we add them up, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And that number tells us the degree of the polynomial. Does that number match with what we were given? Yes. Therefore, we know that these zeros can only have multiplicity of 1. If one of them had a multiplicity of 2, my sum here would be more than the degree of the polynomial. So now we can write our polynomial. So now our polynomial is going to be f of x equals, now please don't forget you have to put in an unknown leading coefficient. We don't know what the leading coefficient is going to be. And then we put in each factor. And since the multiplicity of each factor is 1, that means all I'm going to have is an exponent of 1 on each of my factors. So how we, we found everything except for this leading coefficient. And that's why we're given a point on the polynomial. That point says when x equals negative 6, f of x, which is f of negative 6, equals the number 28. Sorry for my bad handwriting. So what that means is I'm going to put 28 in here, and wherever I see an x over here, I'm going to have to put in negative 6. So let's do this quickly. I get 28 equals a, I still don't know the leading coefficient, 
times negative 6 plus 5 times the quantity negative 6 plus 4 times the quantity negative 6 minus 1. So you can see the only thing I don't know in that equation is my leading coefficient. So let's quickly do the arithmetic. I get a times negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. So I get 28 equals 3 negatives multiplied together here is going to give me a negative. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. So I'm going to get whoops, negative 14a. How do I figure out a? Divide both sides by negative 14. So my leading coefficient is negative 2. That means the equation for my polynomial is negative 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 4 times x minus 1. And we don't have to multiply it out. It's often easiest to leave it in factored form because that's the more useful form of a polynomial.